Good morning, Comp 1. I'm thinking of uh, a moment I had this week at Central Lakes College. I was coming into the building and uh, encountered a student that I had last year, a young man named Xavier. I had him in my uh, uh, Comp 2 class. And uh, he hadn't seen me in a while. And when he ran into me, he, he said, man, when did you grow that beard? And I said, you know, just to be satirical, last couple days. And, you know, that's one question you can ask of a beard. You know, when did you grow it? Uh, I think there's a better reason. Why? Why would you grow such a big, uh, fluffy beard and make yourself look about 10, 15 years older? Well, sometimes beards are rhetorical. And I uh, just want to run something by you. Uh, I, just, I want to know if this is, uh, if this is working. I'm teaching, uh, in addition to our Comp 1, that I'm really enjoying. A couple of sections of Composition 2, a class at the College of St. Benedict, and uh, Class that I've already mentioned, I'm really enjoying classical mythology. Well, I should admit to you, I, I grew this beard for classical mythology. I, I, tell me if this is working. I mean, be honest. Do I look like Zeus? Probably better stop wasting your time and get to the subject of this video. You know, I've gotten a couple emails in the last couple of days, very professional emails, uh, from citizens of Section 74. Uh, because I uh, had the hope that this next paper would come home to roost in something called MLA format. And like I wrote you today in D2L, I was thinking that I would, you know, uh, write a little, uh, uh, some, some commentary on it, some written commentary, explain what the MLA is, why I wrote that, why you shouldn't be scared of it. But it occurs to me, uh, looking ahead to your career academically as you move through your education, uh, you're going to encounter the MLA uh, uh, again. So what I'd like to do today is just post a, a, a modest video in which I explain what those letters stand for, what that acronym means, uh, what it tends to sign and signify for students, and then I'm just going to just informally share with you uh, some ways that I think about the Modern Language Association and, and what they represent to me as kind of an early middle-aged uh, English major. I've been living with it uh, since the late 70s as a high school student. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, growing old with it as a format and as a society. And I think what I'll do is move to my little desk here, the Nerve Center, and um, communicate what I can to you about the MLA. You know, I've been uh, in uh, classrooms for many years, in the last 25 as, as a teacher. And one of the first things I want to tell you about the MLA, uh, Modern Language Association, is that I have been in one high school, college, and university class after another where all you have to do is walk into the English room and say MLA and in terms of student attitudes pretty much what happens is they start uh, spitting and swearing and rending their clothes. You know, it's biblical. Uh, I have encountered one student after another whose regard towards the MLA could really only safely be described as towering hatred, okay? It sounds like a hassle to a lot of students. It sounds uh, busy. It sounds unnecessary. It's, uh, it can be nightmarishly detailed uh, in dealing with it. But it, as you know, a 52-year-old English major, I, I simply uh, feel about it differently. I sometimes wonder if in this country maybe we're just not doing a very good job at understanding, uh, helping people understand what the MLA organization is and what it does and what its purpose is. And I don't want to be the saboteur of the 55,000 high school English teachers that are out there trying to do a good job. You know, I stood among them. But I, I, I'm just wondering if there's a, a, a better way uh, to, to approach the topic. So here's how I see the MLA. Um, first thing I want to tell you is that the MLA is a, it's an organization of scholars. Uh, it started, if memory serves, in the 1880s. And it's, it has a goal to promote and organize and unify scholarly uh, work uh, in this country and, and actually worldwide. It has over 30,000 members. I'm among them. And uh, you know, we don't need to go into the detailed goals of the organization. They do have conferences. Uh, they do have uh, publications. But for our purposes, for the purposes of a, of, a, of a college class, I mainly want you to know this. It, what you want in this class and in the classes that you attend in the future as you move through your education is a professional looking product. Um, you want the paper to look good and because I'm an English major and because this is an English class I have the hope that you'll at least try to format the paper along the lines of the MLA. Uh, 
the Modern Language Association. You might know or may not know that there are different formatting uh, formats for different papers in different disciplines. Again, I'm English, so I like it to be the MLA way. Um, we have nursing, nursing students in this course uh, that are going to take the nursing degree from Central Lakes College. Well, you're going to be using a different documentation strategy. You're going to be using APA. Uh, there's yet another called the Chicago Manual of Style. And keep in mind that as you move through school, one of the most professional questions that you can ask of a teacher is simply by raising your hand and saying, what format would you like this paper in? Now, one of the things that I don't want you to think is that um, this paper is going to, the, the persuasive paper is going to require research. You don't need sources. You can use them if you'd like, but I'm really interested in what you're thinking about whatever topic you're going to make a claim about and, and, and back up. Uh, I already got a couple of emails uh, with people worried about uh, how to cite sources. And you know what? That's not necessarily the territory of Comp 1. That is the topography of the terrain of Composition 2, which I'm also teaching and taught courses like it for years. For our purposes, repeating myself again, the main thing I'm hoping is that your paper will look something like this. Uh, and here's a paper that, uh, I, the last paper I wrote in graduate school a couple years back when I was back getting my MA at St. Cloud State University. It's really dead simple. It, there's, it's nothing to get worried about. Um, you want to be double spaced, number one. You just want the paper double spaced. Uh, we never triple space in MLA. We used to single space back in the 70s when we were uh, quoting block quotes. I thought that looked really cool, but uh, it's gone the way of my childhood. And you want a, a one inch margin ar around the, the, the text. Most word processing programs uh, default to that format wise, so it's no big deal. In the upper left hand corner, you put your name. And the second item you put is the, the name of the teacher. Put me. Just put Johnson. You don't have to be formal about it. Put Jeff Johnson. Uh, put Dr. Johnson if you want to be flattering. The next item you put is the name of the class, Composition 1. And then you put the date. Now you're supposed to do it a different way than what you saw there. I, I wrote May 7th, 2000, whatever year it was. I think that looks better. And then you have the title. Give it a title. Give your paper an imaginative title. Don't just call it the persuasive essay. Give it a name, probably when, when you're done writing it. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you can put your name up in the upper right-hand corner uh, with the page number, and then every page subsequent to that, you, you also put it there. So if, you, you know, if I was really going to be a stickler, I could go Johnson 1, Johnson 2, Johnson 3. The idea uh, being that if the, a wind blows into the professor's office, that you know, the professor can put the paper back together. That's all I'm thinking about when I say and suggest and invite you to uh, hand in a paper uh, in MLA format. Will I mark, mark you down um, if you don't pull this off? No. I just think you want to get in the habitude of mind of handing in essays that look professional and um, look scholarly. Now to look up the line a little bit for you, uh, I, I, I want to tell you this. I have seen a number of Comp 2 students in the last two years confess to me in journal entries or face to face. They say, Man, I was so scared about this class. I'm so glad I'm in, I'm, I'm in this one. There are a number of students that are intimidated by Composition 2, which is required of most students at Central Lakes College. And I understand their intimidation. They are not happy about the idea of writing a 12 to 15 page MLA documented research paper. That sounds like an awful lot of work. But if you get in the right class and it works in the right way, it can actually be an exciting and fulfilling and, uh, 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 and a project that might inform your heart as well as, as, well as your mind. Now, when you get into Composition 2, uh, the MLA uh, business is going to be something that's going to be on your mind a, an awful lot more. Now, this is an ancient book, uh, an ancient handbook uh, put out by the MLA uh, people. Joe Gibaldi, he's been the president since I was a kid. He appears to have stopped aging. And this is an old one. This is from 1995. Every three or four years, the Modern Language Association comes out with one of these manuals. And it's basically a style guide. It tells you how to cite sources. It gets thicker every year because we have more and more different kinds of sources. And every one of them has a different documentation strategy. If you look in here, you're going to find, uh, and, and this is the game. You get a source and you have to classify it. You have to decide what it is. Is it a book by one author? 
a book by two authors? Is it the publishings of, a, of an academic conference? Is it a periodical? It is, is it a television program, a documentary? Uh, on and on and on, a personal interview. Every source type has a strategy uh, that you've more or less got to follow. It's not that big a deal. Uh, and all you do is create a list of your sources at the end of the paper, and then from within the research paper, uh, maybe you'll do next year, within that paper you're going to point at those sources to be thoughtful and to be honest, like I talked about in that plagiarism video. I do this all the time in this video. I would love to pretend to you that all these ideas that I've offered you are mine, that they're Jeff Johnson ideas. I don't have an original idea in my head. I read books and then I tell students about them. And here are some of them. And what I do is I, I point. I say, you know, according to um, uh, uh, Richard Wilbur, according to um, uh, Robert Haas, I'm pointing, pointing, pointing all the time. That's all it boils down to. I'll tell you a little humorous story. I once was foolish enough to stand in front of a bunch of sophomores at my old high school and say, if you can come up with a source type that I can't uh, find a documentation strategy for, I'll give you five bucks, five dollars for every source uh, that I can't classify and figure out how to document. The very next day, a 15 year old student comes in the room and he says, okay Johnson, I just saw a plane uh, fly by our school and there's a banner behind it. I want to cite that banner. I want to quote it. I said, kid, that's not scholarly. Doesn't matter. The student said, I want to quote it. What is the documentation strategy for a plane with a banner? I had to give the kid five bucks. Within a couple days, I lost 50 bucks. Uh, I declared them to be mean, cruel kids, and uh, but pretty much haven't, ha haven't done that since. Um, in general, the MLA guide is just a way to help keep us organized um, as scholars. It, it's all it is. But again, don't think that you've got to go get sources for this paper. Argue from the heart. I want to know what you think about the particular subject. If you do uh, find yourself wanting to cite a source, it's no big deal. The MLA handbook is online. And if you want to go to a first class uh, website uh, where you can have all of this at the tips of your fingers, go to OWL. Go to, go to the Google and enter OWL. Uh, I would love to tell you as an amateur naturalist that you'll be taken to a site that will teach you all about barred owls or spotted owls. Actually, the first place you'll go when you enter OWL is to the online writing lab for Purdue University. It is the end of the line for quality in terms of pages that can offer you all kinds of gear on how to write an MLA paper, an APA paper, a Chicago manual style. The website isn't the most glamorous looking um, place you're going to come across on the internet, but it is efficient and you can use it on, 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 to, to good purposes. In this brief video, uh, there's one more thing I'd like to talk about. And I'll repeat some things that I said to my Composition 2 classes this week. Um, to them, and to you, if you'd like to take my Comp 2 classes next year, I'm sticking around Central Lakes College indefinitely, and I will most definitely be here next year uh, at Central Lakes. So sign up for my Comp 2 classes. Don't get intimidated by those waiting lists uh, that seem to have built up uh, this last December. But if you do come back to me and want to work with me again, I should tell you a couple things about Comp 2. At Central Lakes College, we have teachers that teach it uh, with no theme whatsoever because they have, they have the academic freedom to do so. I need a theme to help me hold things together. Last year, my Comp 2 sections were actually kind of subtitled The America of Mark Twain. Well, this year I'm doing things a little bit differently. I have two sections of Composition 2 and I'm enjoying both of them. One meets Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10, the other Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11. And even though Comp 2 is what's going to appear on their college transcripts, I'm actually calling the course America Between the Wars, um, America Between 1919 and 1939, roughly. I need a theme to help me hold it together and to them hold it together, and I'm also very interested in building a discourse community that is also thematic. I have some hopes for them and for you if you come back to me next year. I want them to be able to uh, make an argument, to be able to build an argument using sources. Uh, item two is I want them to be able to write from sources and point to them and document uh, their thoughts uh, professionally with parenthetical insertions. The third thing I want them to be able to do is to be able to negotiate and deal with different points of view and that is not easy. We all get locked into our way of seeing things and I want them to have a topic, make an argument and find different sources that they can put in collision. Get some paradoxes going, sort things out this way and that way. And it's really interesting the paper topics that, that, that are emerging. And I'm very eager, not to have the end of the school year, but to make it to May, where in the end they're going to offer brief presentations of their papers. 
I've got a student uh, taking a look, for instance, at the uh, early celebrity scandal around 1920, Fatty Arbuckle, uh, a star of the silent screen. I've got a student studying and researching eugenics. I've got a student that's interested in Harry Houdini. I've got students uh, studying prohibition and even the moonshine business here in central Minnesota uh, in, in the 19, uh, uh, you know, during prohibition. But the main thing I did this week is to try to create some points of intersection and parallels between their researching lives and my researching lives. In the weeks ahead, while these students put together these research papers, uh, I want to tell you something kind of fun. I am going to be preparing a presentation uh, because I've been invited to be one of the featured presentations, pre presenters at this year's Minnesota Council of Teachers of English. And in uh, late April, uh, I'm really excited to go to the conference and make a presentation about you, okay? Because I'm going to uh, be talking about the idea of teaching online with YouTube videos, with a YouTube channel. Uh, I've been invited to present at that uh, conference before, but I'm kind of pumped this year, and maybe it sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm, ex I'm excited. This is the first year that they've ever to uh, asked me to do multiple presentations across both days of the conference. And I'm doing exactly what my students are, are doing in Comp 2, and what you'll be doing when you take it. I've got some questions. Not only this, what is my argument, what is my point, but I've also got a couple of key questions. Who can help me? How can I, how can I get some help from other people uh, in exploring this topic, the idea of online distance learning with media, with, with, with videos? And then my next question is, how can I efficiently use these sources to bolster my argument? And I don't want just sources that support me. I'm going to find some sources that push back against the idea of it. And I've got some work ahead. Like my students, I'm going to be reading. Like my students, I'm going to be doing some writing. And very much like my Comp2 students, uh, as well as my students down here at the College of St. Benedict in just that little baby class, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to be presenting. I'm going to walk into a room and no one will be surprised and I'll start talking. And I'm going to be talking about uh, this experience. I'm brand new to online teaching. I've never had a YouTube channel in my life. But there's not a lot of people out there doing it. I want to end by saying I am really glad that the MLA uh, organization exists because I've started doing research for my project and it is just so nice to go into ERIC, which is the Educational Resource Index, and go, wow, this is familiar gear. Here are sources. Uh, here are people writing and documenting in a way that I understand. And it, without it, without the MLA, uh, it, it would just be chaos and scholarship wouldn't advance. Like I've said before, we all uh, participate in the production of the world. And I know you may not end up an academic like me, um, but you are moving through school, and uh, there's kind of ways of doing things and, 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 and ways that you know you shouldn't do things. And the MLA uh, kind of kind of helps with that. You can probably tell I get kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling just talk about it, talking about it, but I guess I'm an English major. I, I, I love this gear. So again, in summary, no big deal. Just take a look at uh, and I'll even send you a couple of samples uh, so you can see uh, what a first page uh, should look like. I'm not talking about sources. I'm just talking about uh, having a double space paper, inch margins, your name, name of the teacher, name of the class, and the date, and the title. No big deal. See you in the next video, Comp 1.